now as we how as we know the pipeline doesn't consist of a straight pipe it has got bends it has got t's it has got walls and other uh, obstructions or uh, items which will increase the pressure drop they exist there so we need to account for that one method of accounting for these different items is to convert the resistance provided by these items in terms of their equivalent straight length so that is the approach we'll be using uh, in this particular uh, calculations so we'll convert for example if there is a wall on a 2 inch pipeline so we'll convert a, that particular wall into an equivalent pipe of 2 inch size how to do that we'll just immediately see so at the end of this process you will get for a given pipe size what is the equivalent straight pipe length and for that pipe length using the darcy's equation we can find out what is the pressure drop and we consider in your system how many different sizes of pipelines are there so for each pipeline size you will do the pressure drop calculation separately add all those pressure drops and you will get the total pressure drop for the system so that is how we will be proceeding in this particular uh, part so let's see how these equivalent straight pipe lengths are obtained for calculating the equivalent straight pipe length for different items different tables are available so what we are looking at here is the table for walls so for different types of walls how do we calculate the equivalent straight length is given in this particular table so if you look closely at this table you'll find that at the first column you are having the pipe size in inches so for example if you are having a wall which is lying on 2 inch pipeline so you have to consider the 2 inch row determine what is the type of your wall so let's say your wall is that of gate wall and it is in fully open condition so gate wall of 2 inch size is equivalent to a pipe which is of 2.25 feet so this particular table is with the fps units so the unit of this uh, equivalent pipe size is given in feet similarly for globe walls depending on their condition and uh, the position of the, the orientation of the handle there are different uh, lengths which are available so again these are in fully open conditions then we have for check walls and the other type of walls the values are given so in this way we can calculate if your pipeline has got walls it can be converted into a straight line next we have the t's and elbows the different types of fitting so we have elbows t's and bends so for which the equivalent length again in feet are given by this particular table so if you have the first column is in terms of the pipe size so if you have a 2 inch pipeline and if you have a 90 degree elbow as we have seen in the previous lecture we have short radius elbows and long radius elbows so if you have short radius 90 degree elbow of 2 inch size its equivalent straight length is 5.25 inches so in this way we can calculate for different uh, we have the 90 degree bends other than the standard uh, radii and we have got the t's so in t's you have the flow which is going across branch and t which is going along the main line so for each of this case we have different pressure drop uh, uh, different equivalent lengths which are which need to be considered so we'll solve a numerical problem in which this particular aspect will become more clear so this particular table corresponds to the inlets and exits to the pipeline so the pipelines will start from one equipment and they will end in the other equipment so wherever there is entry and exit so there are entry losses and exit losses so that is what Uh, this will uh, this table will give you so again the first column is uh, the straight line uh, the size of the pipeline which is getting attached to the equipment 
the first column indicates the entry of pipe into the equipment or it is the exit of the pipeline into the equipment and the last column indicates from equipment into the pipe so it is the entry to the pipeline the entry may be smooth so in which case the last column is used if it is abrupt then the third column is used and if the entry has got inside projection then the second column is used so for example if you have a pipeline which is entering into an equipment and it is of one inch size the equivalent pipe size is four feet so again here also it is in uh, feet next we have the reducers so in case of reducers we have two sizes the size which is uh, one size will be smaller other size will be larger again here equivalent lengths are given in terms of feet if you are having expansion taking place then you have to use the first column and if you have the contraction which is taking place you have to use the second column so if you are going from larger size to smaller size then you have to use the second column and if you are coming from smaller to larger size then you have to consider the first column so depending on that we will get the values of the equivalent pipe length now here point to be noted is these lengths are given in terms of uh, if you look at the footnote so all these equivalent lengths are corresponding to the smaller pipe size so if you have a reducer which is uh, reducing from one inch to half inch the equivalent length would be given for that of half inch pipeline so for all reducers the smaller size pipe uh, will be considered not reducers but reducers or expander whichever way uh, it is used uh, always the equivalent length is given for the smaller size of so we have seen that for a given pipeline so your pipeline will consist of some walls some bends some t joints and you will be reaching to the destination so from point a to point b so each of the bends each of the walls each of the t joints if there are reducers then each of the reducer you have to calculate their equivalent straight pipe length so for a given pipe size you will get the total uh, equivalent straight pipe length once you get that using the equivalent straight pipe length use the darcy's equation to calculate the delta p or the uh, pressure drop head using the Darcy's uh, equation and once you get that head using Bernoulli's equation you can calculate how much pressure you must supply at the inlet in order to achieve certain pressure at the outlet or vice versa so that is how this particular method works for doing the for sizing of the pipelines so if you have to size a pipeline from point A to point B and you know at exit how much pressure is required or other way then you can determine in order to achieve that pressure how much pressure you must supply at the inlet so if you have some restriction as to how much capacity of pump you can use for a given pump size you have to determine what is the lowest pipeline size that you can use remember that in order to reduce the cost you will try to reduce the pipe of uh, the size of pipelines the smaller the pipeline you will get smaller uh, value of uh, a smaller cost and uh, that is what one would look at at that particular point so for a given pump capacity what is the smallest pipe size we can uh, supply if you give larger pipeline obviously the pressure drop would be less but the cost will be more so some kind of uh, break even or optimum point needs to be found out so that is what is the basis of the next method which is known as the economy based method or the pipe size based on economics so in any plant design the total cost will consist of the initial or capital cost and the running or operating cost
So if you divide this particular equation by the life of the plant, you will get the annualized cost. So annualized cost where n is life of plant. Would be given by how much capital cost spread over the life of the equipment divided by the operating cost per year. So usually the operating cost is available per year basis. So if this is a total operating cost over the life, then you will get uh, by this equation the cost. So if you plot the first part, the capital cost, the capital cost consists of the cost of piping, process equipment and other factors. So here we are just looking at the cost of the piping. So since, since it constitute a sizable part of the total plant cost. So if you plot on the y-axis the capital cost annualized and on the x-axis you keep the pipe size. For example, we are just now, for the case of simplicity, we will consider that out of the entire uh, plant, we are considering a particular section which has got a st certain, we have choice of choosing between different sizes of the pipeline. So you can have smaller pipe size or larger pipe size. So if you choose the smaller pipe size, accordingly the walls, the fittings, the nozzle forgings, everything will be smaller. So we will get a the initial cost or the plant building cost or the capital cost will be smaller. So we'll have smaller cost here and as the pipe size increases, this cost will keep on increasing. Whereas if you consider the operating cost which consists of cost for running the plant and if you plot it again with the pipe size, so this is the operating cost. Per year. Here we will know that, uh, note that for smaller pipe size you will have more pressure drop. So you will have more resistance and as a result uh, there will be more uh, pressure drop. To overcome that pressure drop you require bigger energy requirements. So you require bigger compressor, bigger pump in order to overcome that pressure drop. So for smaller pipe size you will have a uh, higher operating cost. And as the pipe size increases, your operating cost will drop down. So you have the reverse curve which is coming here. So if you add them together, you will get the total cost versus the pipe size. So you have total cost divided total cost per year. So you will find that your cost curve will be something like this, and there will be an optimum point or the point with the lowest total cost. So this is the cost, uh, this is the pipe size which we need to choose for that particular section. So as you can see in order to do this you need to take various, you need to build this curve. So for that purpose you need to develop the pressure drop for different pipe sizes. So it is an iterative process and in general you, you need to take care of the piping software which can do this calculations iteratively and uh, note that the, uh, this particular calculation need to, to be done for all piping sections in your plant. So it is a huge calculation and uh, computerized approach is uh, the one which is practically the feasible way. So using this particular approach one can optimize the on the basis of economics or cost what is the best uh, pipe size that needs to be determined. So that is the last approach which is which will be followed for large plant design but at the heart of heart of this particular approach again the pressure drop calculation comes in picture so what we have seen as a second method it always uh, is a principal method which uh, needs to be used in the economics or cost based approach as well so we have seen till here the three different ways velocity based which is very approximate way the pressure drop based way which gives you uh, more rigorous way of determining the pipe size and then you can convert the pressure drop into the cost and find out the, what is the optimum size which will balance between the capital cost and the operating cost. 
so that is the last or the, or the economics based method since the pressure drop calculation is essence of the uh, this particular calculation we will see an example where for a given pipeline which consists of different uh, elements such as valves fittings how do we do the calculation for the pressure drop so that is what we will see next